Justin, I think it's time, though, that we move on to what's vastly becoming one of our favorite segments of our show, Reboot, and it's the mailbag. And the cool thing is, is I wasn't sure, because before, when we did this show four years ago, we didn't get too much interaction from people outside on our social media. But we've had mailbag questions every episode that we've done this. I mean, besides the first one where you just came up with some things to kind of get it going. Yeah. But now people are asking us questions, and I think we got another fun one that ties right in with our local sports discussion. Yes, and uh, I'm going to have you read them because my computer crashed <laughs> on me, and uh, I don't have them in front of me anymore. Well, I have a computer this week because <laughs> Andrew's amazing and fixed both his laptop and my laptop. He so. is amazing. Andrew, right. I, we need to hear your voice. We haven't heard your voice all show. Hi, Justin. <laughs> He's just, <laughs> well, except, we did, for, yeah. except for the very beginning. Yeah, the intro. I've said, I've said a few things. things. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just and Andrew really can hop in. about basketball. Andrew can hop in on these mailbag questions as well. I'm sure he'll have some hot takes on some of the later ones for sure. But this first one is an anonymous mailbag question. So apparently we don't know who it's from. I and, know. and it says, <laughs> that's creepy. Uh, During the scrimmage hiatus, did you see any local athletes that you wish you could have covered on the show? Yeah. Yes. It's a complicated <laughs> question yes, really because... so many. During this hiatus, I mean, you've been broadcasting football and basketball. Yes. So you've you've covered them to some extent, although not having as much of an opportunity. The thing I loved so much about our show before was it gave us a platform to really recognize these kids for how hard they work and what their great accomplishments were. Um, immediately after we stopped doing the show the first time, I was still working at the Vida, and so there was a lot of players in Monty during that time, like Jordan Spradlin um, and her and her age group that. I still got to cover, you know, Kyler Pranny, Logan Truax, Hutton Napier, like kids that, Hutton. even when the show wasn't going on, I it's still got to be a part of what they were doing yeah. for a while. Um, but the only things that really come to my mind when I think about this is Aberdeen kids. You know, when I go through this, I, it's been three years since I really covered any sports. Um, but I've been kind of involved in Montesano, and I'm pretty active on Twitter, and I get to, you know, say things about kids when I want to. But I would have really, really, really liked to cover Kylan Touch from Aberdeen oh, football. That was that was the first kid that popped in my head too. Me too. I mean, broadcasting his games, especially the team that he had around him. I mean, sadly at the point at that point, the Aberdeen program wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. It was Kylan Touch or nothing. Yeah. And he, the numbers he was putting he up still were made it work. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I've we've seen some great runners come through here. Mm -hmm. Absolute studs. I've seen Nolan Hoynes, who was a college running back. I've seen. We've seen Kyler Pranty. We've seen Truaxes. We've seen a ton of great running backs come through. He's at the top of my list. Yeah. And I know that I could get some feedback on that, but if you watched him run with the blocking that he had to run behind and against the competition that he was playing in that 2A league... And when everyone knew he was going to get the ball. Every single play. It was it was amazing, and that's not even getting into the fact that he was probably the best free safety I've ever seen in high school football. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we've seen some great free safeties too. I mean, Pranty as well, and yeah. and we've seen some stud players, and yet he was just on another level. Right. So you know that like we keep mentioning Kyler Pranty, I've often said that of all the time that I covered local sports, I think that he may have been the most explosive player I've ever seen. Like that that kid. Um, he was a really good defender at linebacker as well, but as far as being a ball carrier and being able to do something with the ball after he had it in his hands, I can't remember anybody who went from zero to 60 faster than Kyler Pranny did. Um, also, interviews with him were really fun because he was he would be like, you know, he'd score seven touchdowns, and then I'd come <laughs> up to him after the game, and he'd be rolling his eyes like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. And I was like, Kyler, if you don't want to talk to me, don't score so many touchdowns. <laughs> and I won't have to interview. I'll interview somebody else. Um, but he was a really fun cover for me. But, I mean, yeah, Kylan Touch. And then the other thing that I thought of immediately was a couple of other Aberdeen kids in last year's duo of Ben DeBlanco and Javier, Javier Bajorje. Is that, yes, that right? that's it. Those two kids in basketball, I watched them play a couple times. I would have loved to cover them and been so more much involved fun. in what they did. So much fun. I mean, those kids are a blast. And a lot of times, I mean, you could see, like, different situations where kids might be competing for the attention or maybe butt heads a little bit. Those two kids were, they acted like brothers. I mean, I interviewed them both after games sometimes and asked them about each other. And sometimes I'd have one for the player of the game interview or then the other the next week. And then one time I brought them both up 
And I was like, hey, how's it, how's it work on the court? You guys are both great scorers. And, and they're just like, yeah, that's my brother over there. So if he's ever having a down night or if we need to get him more in rhythm, you know, they shared the ball perfectly. It's pretty amazing. It was absolutely amazing to watch. And they, those two were an absolute blast. And some of the numbers that they put up in, yeah. in games were just insane. And, and I sometimes mean, they would take turns having great scoring days. Yeah. I mean, Ben DeBlanco, I think, put up 42 in a game yeah. that I covered. And then the next week, I think, but Jorge went for 31 or something like that. Yes. And it's all, I always feel like when you have a great backcourt duo, like, I feel this way about Damian Lillard. I don't want to take this to NBA. It's kind of a weird comparison. Yeah. But I feel <laughs> no, like they one of his me. greatest strengths is the ability to know when to defer. Yeah. Because I've seen games where he's a little off, and he's their point guard. He will literally just give CJ McCollum the ball and say, here, dude, you're on tonight. Go go get it done. At the end of games, yeah. it's not a normal trait for an NBA superstar. No, and that's about as the best comparison that I can come up with, though, is Ben played like Damian Lillard. Explosive, fast to the basket, loved to drive, but would also pull up for ridiculous threes and just catch absolute fire from the outside. And but Jorge's pull-up jumper was sick, but his main thing was trying to get to the lane, put up floaters, like, but also could hit from the outside, too, and stretches. Like, that's how they played. So I'm, I love that you brought that up because, yeah, that backcourt connection was pretty darn similar. As a minor caveat to this question, now we brought the show back like right before Monty's football season ended, this, <laughs> and I got the chance to talk about how connected <laughs> I felt to these Monty kids, yeah. especially, I mean, there's a lot of them, but especially Braden Dorman, Cole Daniels, and Sam Winter, and I guess that would I would add them to the list even though I got to ooze about them a little bit. Mm -hmm. I got to, to talk about them a little bit. But I would have loved to have more opportunities over the last year and a half or so to talk about those kids a little more. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to remember from the Hoquiam side of things, because there's a bunch of Hoquiam teams, but I think that we covered that one group of freshmen who started as their freshmen all the way through to their senior year. I'm pretty sure, was that in our entire run on the scrimmage? I'm not positive, but it had to be pretty close. But, I mean, that's always one of my all-time favorite teams. Was that the... Jared Steen, Jack, Jared Steen, Ad, Jack, Jack Adams, Adams, Jace Varner, Bubba uh, Dick, Bubba Dick, through most of it also. Through, yeah, and then um, Anthony Nash, yeah. um, Ryan Espidal. Yeah, I, I mean, think we were still doing the show. I think that was right towards the tail end of the show. That was a special group of kids. Yeah, that was a blast to cover as well. So, I mean, there's, there's so many different areas and groups and teams that we've had so much fun covering. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we could talk about this one answer for another 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But... We're going to move on instead. Okay. And since your computer crashed, although it looks like it's back up. It slacker. is, but I couldn't get the file. All right. So is it time to get rid of an automatic home playoff game for division winners? Whoever asked this question, was this Caleb? Yeah. Caleb, Caleb back home asked this question. He says, yes, all division winners should still get in, but seating should be based on record. Justin, what are your thoughts? I like, I don't like the idea of just getting rid of all the divisions. I've heard people say that before. I actually think Caleb's answer is kind of perfect because I like the idea that there could be division rivals. I like the idea that the travel's not as far if you get teams that are closer to each other to play more. Um, I like the idea that there are teams that you're going to play twice in a season because I think it just encourages those rivalries, and rivalries are fun. Um, but the 7-9 and nine Seahawks are kind of a perfect example. Exactly. And like whatever team comes out of the NFC least this year, whether it's the Cowboys or the Eagles or whatever, um, is a perfect example of why a division winner shouldn't automatically get a home game. Because not only did you not have a good record, but you also played against lesser opponents all year because your division stinks. Exactly. So I think Caleb pretty much nailed it. You should, the division winners should all get in. I like the idea of there being a division and a prize for winning it, but I think that seeding should go based on record and tiebreak. Andrew, what are your thoughts on that? I like it the way it is. I like it when a team can back their way into the playoff with a losing <laughs> record and then win a home game against the Saints with one of the greatest <laughs> plays in NFL history. Some people just like to watch the world burn. I, I think it, it makes it a little bit less straightforward. You don't just have to be... You don't have to be... It, if you want to win the Super Bowl, you don't just have to be really good. You have to be a little bit lucky. You have to be able to go to a crappy team at home and beat them sometimes. 
Um, so I don't know. I, I, I get the argument, but I actually kind of like the amount of, of, uh, controversy, uns uncertainty or controversy that it adds to it. The weight that it puts on winning your division yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. it makes it, it, you, you, you still want to win your division, even if you're a way better team yeah. than crap. Kind of reminds teams. me of the college football playoff and how they do add extra weight to teams that won their conference. Mm -hmm. So I can see both sides of it. I think, personally, I've always been kind of on yours and Caleb's side, where I've kind of thought that way, but Andrew's argument right there was kind of the best argument that I've ever heard on the other side of it. Yeah. So, because uncertainty makes it fun. Yeah, it's a different, and it's, yeah. it's something that's not normal. I feel like so many times we get into this normal rut of this is how it happens, this is where it goes, but this kind of throws a little wrench into it, and it's like, yeah, what if this crazy thing happens? <laughs> The Seahawks getting spanked right now, which is not fun. I peeked at the score. Oh yeah, we're recording this while the Seahawks game is going <laughs> yeah. on. What is the score right now? It's <laughs> nine to twenty-eight Rams with seven minutes and thirty-seven seconds left in the fourth. Arf. Yeah, we got a regular we want them. Yeah. This is what yeah. we do. Uh, and Rashard our Penny injury. Offense has only scored three points. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. And in the first half. In the first half, the Seahawks' offense looked pretty good. Like, they were moving the ball pretty well. No, I'm there sorry. Some... Our offense scored six points. I'm dumb and forgot that we missed the extra point. No, no, you were right. Our I offense... said seven, though. Oh, you said three, I thought. Oh, oh yeah. Only scored scored three yes, points. I'm dumb. Come on, Andrew. <laughs> our <laughs> offense has scored three points. Our offense has scored three points. I have watched zero seconds of defense. Defense has scored six points. I don't points. care nearly as much yeah, as you guys but have. there are so many drops. Okay, anyway, we'll get, yeah. we'll get to that a little bit later. Ugh. Daniel Numbers are little, hard. Daniel's actually a little bit more edgy uh, than normal on, I am. during this show because he's subject, so frustrated about On the, the subject of numbers being hard, Justin, you and I are both correct. Penta and Quinta are both uh, prefixes that mean five. Oh, so yeah. we win, and once again, Daniel loses. What? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying quintuple, too. Yeah. What are you talking about? I didn't hear it. I said I quintuple double. We'll play it back. We'll figure it out. We'll play it back. We'll figure it out. Get out of here. <laughs> Dang. Anyway, last mailbag question. Andrew, I'll start with your opinion on this. Artificial tree or real tree? Why? Who is that from, by the way? Anybody remember? Someone. That was an early. I, that was an early question. I just copied and tree. pasted it. Real somewhere. trees smell good. It's mm. it's half of what Christmas is all about. Not really, but but it's half of what makes Christmas Christmas to me is is that smell of having a tree in the house. Uh, there's definitely downsides to them. And I will say, for the first time in my life, I saw a, a fake tree that I thought actually looked really good this year up at Costco. It was like $600. What? So apparently fake trees that look good are for rich people. Dang. But, uh, but their fake trees are getting better, but I still say, until, until it can smell like the woods, you got to get a real tree. I'm pretty much right there with them. The only bad thing about real trees to me that I've noticed this year... Is we found like five spiders in our real tree. Oh, yeah. Not about that. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, I love having a real tree. I don't mind watering it. It gives me a chance, something to keep track of a little bit. I've always been the one, too, since my birthday is kind of close to Christmas and January 6th. If anybody wants to get me a present. <laughs> no. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't get He's not kidding. I'm kidding. He's not kidding. I'm kidding. Donate to, or am I? Donate to charity yeah. on his behalf. Exactly. <laughs> Do that. Find a good one. No, but I've always wanted my parents to keep up the Christmas tree until my birthday. And that's a long time. And I'm like, hey, 12 days of Christmas. It, it, 12 days of Christmas. If that starts on the 25th, then <laughs> I it's it like pushing it. That's not it? joking. I, I, I don't know. That the 12 days of Christmas, 12 ended, days of Christmas oh, is a farce. It's like 60 days of Christmas, and it starts in... Halloween. It yeah. starts November. No, it starts before trying. Halloween. <laughs> it's stupid. I'm, I'm, a, little, uh, I'm I, a little grinchy. Yeah, you guys are both grinchy you, about Christmas because you work for UPS. That's not why. so December is terrible. Because even as like, this not is as a kid, shit. not as a kid, <laughs> but even as like a teenager and an older child, I started to dislike festivity <laughs> because it feels so unnecessary. <laughs> I just dislike it when people are happy. Sometimes I don't like fun. <laughs> Justin also okay, but doesn't like birthdays. I, get, I have a really strong take on trees. But, but first, you just 
basically quoted my dad. My birthday. dad loves to say, I hate fun. <laughs> my birthday is an exercise in vanity. If you're over nine years old, you should not be celebrating a birthday. Do you think you're so cool that the day that you're born needs to be celebrated and everything needs to be about you for a day? No, but I like getting stuff. If anybody wants to send Daniel a birthday gift, up. I have a really strong opinion on the tree thing. Okay, okay. Okay. Nature is yucky. <laughs> <laughs> Trees smell really good. And the one super positive thing about a tree being in your house is you get Christmas smell. And Christmas smell is the one redeeming quality of Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Baked goods, Christmas trees, they smell really good. Yeah. Trees are sticky, and they have bugs in them, <laughs> and they're gross. <laughs> so you're going to bring something from nature into your house? Get a potted plant. <laughs> like, what, what, do you need a Chris, what do you need a tree for? Okay, so... Last Potted year it would also be nature, bro. Yeah, but it's so it's so contained. Yeah, but it's still nature. It's the okay. same thing. You're right, Christmas you're right. tree. And... You're right. Don't get a potted plant either. That's stupid. <laughs> Don't get a potted plant or a Christmas tree. So this is my thought. You get a fake tree. Okay. You maybe spend a little bit more money on it right away, but it's an investment. You use it for years. Okay. You just keep bringing it in every year. You can get car air fresheners to get Christmas tree smell, all right? It's not yucky. It's not sticky. It's not gross. It's not bringing spiders into your house. I don't think it smells the same. It smells very different. I wish I could get a real <laughs> Christmas tree smell without a real Christmas tree. It's the one thing that I miss. But last year was the, maybe two years ago, was the first time that my wife finally said, maybe we should get a fake tree. So we had always previously gotten real trees, and I did it because I love my family. But I hate real Christmas trees. I also kind of... I don't like things that are yucky. So, like... Fishing? Fishing. <laughs> is yucky? Everything about fishing is yucky. Oh, my I, God. I'll actually... The fish I, are yucky. The bait is yucky. The water's a, yucky. I have a lot more sympathy for that point. Yeah. Christmas trees Nature also. is not yucky. Yeah, it is. Na nature's nature. great. Okay, nature's but when you bring amazing. a Christmas tree into your house, it's got sap all over it. Like, even if you wear gloves, you're getting sap on your clothes, you're getting sap on your face, you're trying to, like, wedge this <laughs> stupid thing from outdoors in through your door and setting it up and, like, you got to balance it just right inside the inside the thing. you got to get the tree skirt up. There's pine needles everywhere. You can't really vacuum them. Like, it's the worst. It's the worst. Whoever thought of this tradition... <laughs> <laughs> needs to have their Christmas tradition thinking privileges revoked. You are a Grinch. That's what I'm just going to say. I accept it. You are a Christmas Grinch. I accept Right that. here on the scrimmage. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, that's going to do it for our mailbag, mailbag questions this week. If you want your question answered and you want to hear someone have the ridiculous hot take like nature is yucky and that Christmas tree shouldn't be a thing. If you want that type of <laughs> awesome, awesome hot take, then uh, you know find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever. Leave a comment asking us a question. We'll answer it on our mailbag. We just live in such a place where everybody loves the outdoors, too. Well, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Anyway, leave us a question. Say, you know, hey, for the next week's mailbag, we'll get to it. We've had so much fun with that. I'm such a ridiculous person. All right, so... <laughs>